Now, next up, we are going to be speaking to Philip Sykes from the, Br- the, the British School of Etiquette. Now, I felt a little bit pressured, you know, being a Grimsby gal, being from up north, I thought, I'm sure there isn't an etiquette school in Grimsby, and I can confirm there isn't. <laughs> and I sort of wanted to show Philip that I had great um, etiquette skills. So I thought before I spoke to Philip, I'm just going to have a little bit of a practice. Um, so I rang my fella, Biggie, and I said, hi, hi, Biggie, can you just um, have a little bit of a practice on the phone with me um, for this interview? And this is how it went. Right, that should work out for me fine. Thank you. OK, what's your pre-record about? Um, I'm basically speaking to a guy from the British School of Etiquette, and we're going to talk about whether etiquette what? is... Um, slight... And talk about how you have zero etiquette whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> kind <laughs> of. <laughs> <laughs> Have I just hit the nail on the head? No, I'm just talking about how it might have slipped during lockdown, maybe. Well, you, you might, have, you might have slipped. Your etiquette might have slipped. <laughs> uh, let's go for, let's go for when you were when I was spooning you a couple nights ago. <laughs> that's, that's very poor. That's poor form, that kid. I will speak to him about breaking wind. <laughs> on my crotch. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Philip. How are you? Kim, I'm so well. Thank you so much for such a wonderful opportunity to to be engaging with you. And uh, again, thank you for being so punctual. Oh, thank you, Philip. Now, I'm ever so sorry that you just had to hear um, about my terrible behaviour with my partner. Um, So I'm hoping that you can help me out with some etiquette that potentially has slipped during lockdown. I would love to try to do my best to support you in any way I can. <laughs> you made it sound like it's going to be a really difficult mission. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I doubt it. Oh, thank you very much, Philip. Well, firstly, um, I'd just like to mention, um, I thought, right, I'll have a look for an etiquette school, um, you know, really close to me um, in the area. And it seems a lot, many of the etiquette schools are down south, a lot of them in the, um, close to the heart of London as well. Um, is is that sort of maybe why some of us up north don't quite speak some of the, the Queen's English, if you like? Is that a bad thing, Philip? Oh, not at all, Kim. I, I quite uh, find the accent from uh, the northern part of the United Kingdom, England, just charming. So it's got nothing to do with uh, the poshness or anything like that whatsoever. You know, etiquette and manners are for everybody. And actually, the more people understand of the, we have a phrase that we coin at the British School of Etiquette, the power of etiquette and manners. You can open doors for yourself anywhere in the world. Oh, wow, I love that. And literally, as you're speaking, I'm thinking my accent is going to change because the way you speak, I want to copy it. (laughs) So there'll be listeners going, all of a sudden, Kim's Grimsby accent is disappearing the more and more we talk, Philip, which I don't think will be a bad thing. Well, you know, Kim, you've got a charming accent, but like every every single one of us, if there's something you want to change about yourself, it's always advisable <laughs> uh, to to take on a coach and 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 get some. You know, one can always take on a coach and see how how the lessons go. But you you're very charming, and, and I love your accent, and especially when you slow down and you make a proper effort to connect with your with your wonderful uh, sort of communication. It really makes a big difference. Oh, well, thank you ever so much, Philip. But you might be quite disappointed with me with the, some of the suggestions that I need help with at the moment. Will that be OK with you? Go All guns blazing, Kim. I'm in your hands. <laughs> well, thank you. Now, firstly, what I would like to um, touch upon is um, we might as well go straight ahead into the nitty gritty is unfortunately during lockdown a lot of us have been spending um well not always unfortunate but ourselves and our partners have been really spending a lot of time with each other so maybe we've got a chance to see some of the more lazy sides of ourselves um if we like and the talk the conversation as you've just heard of breaking wind has come up between me and my partner and maybe it has slipped slightly just a little bit now I have also heard in some places that breaking wind isn't a negative, but what are your first initial thoughts on breaking wind in company, please, Philip? Well, firstly, I love your your introduction into all of this. You, you've really softly, <laughs> gently let me down here. So firstly, firstly, actually, 
Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, the, the polite thing would to be would be to say excuse me or pardon, and 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 to no one in particular. So uh, you know, often you may be sitting at the dining room table, you might burp or you know, all of a sudden a bit of wind escapes from, from, from down below. You just say excuse me to no one in particular. And funny enough, it's um, uh, I, I've been very fortunate to travel the world quite a lot with uh, coaching and training people. And um, various people, sort of predominantly the French, would just say, oh, pardon. And you would just let it go as if it was just normal, normal, natural, and, and just move on and just literally just continue the conversation as if nothing has happened. Now, going back to your sort of situation, I think um, couples getting very sort of... Uh, uh, overly comfortable with one another could be the, the, the sort of leading to breaking wind in front of each other and, and obviously it happens globally around the world but again <laughs> I think it's something that one could add a bit of respectfulness to at the, at the same time there's a bit of obviously banter and a bit of tongue in cheek about it all but um, for some reason we as the human, human race we, we tend to have a big chuckle about people breaking wind yeah, I think sometimes that makes it... That's where maybe the the etiquette line is because when you're a child as well, it's absolutely hilarious. And older members of your family will, will do it. My granddad used to do it all the time to the point where, Philip, we, we could walk down the street and my dad does it as well. He would, as a kid, put my hand near his bum and then break wind and I'd laugh my head off. I'd be like, this is so funny. So can I blame it on the nurturing? I think on this occasion you may have to blame it on the nurturing, <laughs> despite the beautiful humour that's attached to it and the fun. Um, and there's obviously no hidden hidden agenda there on any level. But um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I think this is what's lovely. I think a lot of the things in life we do have to laugh about a lot of things. Um, it, it really does cure most of life's ills. And you know, it, it depends on whose company you do it and is it appropriate. And look, I'm not the, I'm not going to shout from the rooftops and say it's okay to break wind in front of your partners or friends and things like that on any level. I think it can be actually considered as being quite rude and, and disrespectful. But it, I suppose you need to weigh up which company you're in, who you're with. Is it family and friends that have pretty much grown up? They know you very well and this is the way you've always been. Having said that, uh, you could always try and put one foot in front of the other. In other words, find the correct foot and start as you mean to go on and, and sort of put a stop to, to going down breaking wind in front of your partner. Oh, thank you, Philip. Well, that's that's answered that one for me. I definitely think I need to have more manners. Keep the romance alive, I think, definitely is the answer to that one. Um, so I will try my best to improve that. Now, during lockdown, we have had a tendency to not get dressed. Now, yeah. what's the etiquette when you're answering the door or um, answering door in your pyjamas, taking the bins out in your pyjamas, maybe walking to the shop in your pyjamas? What a great question. <clears throat> and believe it or not, if you make an effort to get out of bed each day and dress as if you were going to the office, or maybe maybe not as smartly as if one were going to the office, but you make an effort to dress, and for the ladies who like to put a bit of makeup on, for the men put a pair of chinos and a shirt on, it actually elevates your day and your mindset. It actually triggers you into a completely different mindset. So I'm, I'm fully um, understanding when it comes to people having a lazy day, um, maybe on a weekend, but during Monday to Friday, I think, with lockdown, we have become lazy and we have become sort of a bit complacent. And actually to shift your mindset and to turn things around, I would honestly urge everybody to make an effort on how you present yourself on a daily basis. Because when you do answer that telephone or you do answer the door or you engage in a Zoom call, you're going to be far more elevated mentally and emotionally. Wow. Thank you. So really, we should nip that in the bud now. The sun's starting yeah, to shine. It's enough. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And Camino, you know, it's very similar to, to parents being told not to drop their kids off at school in their pyjamas. I mean, it, it's just not the done thing. And it's not even a case of the done thing. It's just not normal. You normally, you know, there's nightwear and there's, even, you know, there's obviously evening dress when you go to a dance or a ball or a cocktail party. And then there's day wear. And I think, it, you know, the more effort you make, and actually, believe it or not, Kim, it takes just as much effort to throw a tracky top on as it does a nice blouse. So, you know, make that little extra effort because you never know who you could bump into. One person, one opportunity could change your life for the rest of your life. You just never know. So I think everything in life is about making that extra effort. Oh, per- that is such a valid point, actually. When I put my scruffy hoodie on, I need to be picking out one of my nice iron tops. That's that's the best advice. Thank you for that, Phil. Philip. Right, Philip, we have got some guests that we're going to be speaking to later that you have already given um, some advice on the, the topics that they're going to be speaking about. So thank you very much for that, and we can't wait to hear it. But overall, etiquette in general, Philip, I'm going to let you round up. 
Thank you. Kim, firstly, it's been such a privilege and a pleasure to engage with you. I think, you know, you, you just keep lightening people, lighting people's lives up for a start because this is what this is all about. For me, I just want everyone out there to understand that etiquette and manners coupled with emotional intelligence are really the key ingredient uh, that we all need in our lives. And it's all about being self-aware, having emotion management, self-motivation, empathy and social skills. And for me, manners represent your inner self, whereas etiquette is what and how you portray yourself in public. And one really represents the way of acting and the other is how to treat others. And I think etiquette really and manners summed up. Think about the traffic lights in society. They're there so we don't bump into each other. And it's not about, oh, this and that and blah, 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 hot potato in your mouth nonsense. It's got nothing to do with poshness. This is about common decency to people. And Kim, I'd love to round off with someone asked me many years ago. They said, Philip, give me an understanding of, of what the British School of Etiquette is all about and what do you teach? And, and I said, well, I could bore you to death and t- tell you that we teach etiquette and manners and fall asleep. So I went on to share four things that I love sharing. Firstly, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. Secondly, it's ability. It's the ability to put people at ease in a very short space of time. It's the ability to make people feel comfortable in your presence. Thirdly, it's about having a what can I do for you attitude. How can I help you? How can I support you? Is there anything that you require right now in your life? And the fourth one is, I truly believe that if we really make an effort to do a random act of kindness or random act of thoughtfulness on a daily basis, we may just set the world in the right direction. So for me, really, this sums up etiquette and manners in, 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 in its true sort of entirety. It's very simple to understand. And I honestly believe that we all make an effort. We can really make a difference in this world now and, and going forward in our lives. And, you know, unfortunately, whether we like it or not, our children will become, you know, what they see their parents are. And if we as parents and adults can guide and steer our kids and give them this beautiful tool of etiquette, manners, and emotional intelligence, boom, you're going to get the most phenomenal, phenomenal generation coming up. Oh, Philip, thank you so much. Those four points I need to remember forever and I need to take them with me in the future. Thank you so much for taking this time to speak to me. And how can people um, just just quickly get to you and find some ways to get etiquette advice and join in an etiquette school? Oh, thank you. So we obviously, like everyone does, we have the British School of Etiquette.com. We have a fantastic Facebook page, uh, a YouTube channel. We're on obviously on Instagram and LinkedIn. And if anyone would like to email in, even for a brief chat, I'd be more than happy to engage. The best email address is hello at the British School of Etiquette.com. I've learned so much already, Phil. Philip. I'm calling you Phil, though. It, that it might be a, that might be a, a uncommon thing of me to do. A common Not thing to all. me to do. Um, Philip, thank you. I am l- learning so much, and I have learned so much. Thank you for your time. I'm going to update you in the future as well. I'm going to let you know how I'm doing. Will that help? Please, of course. <laughs> I love progress. There's nothing beautiful. It's like putting a a beautiful orchid in the right place. It gives it the right amount of warmth, enough water each week, and it blossoms into the most beautiful flower that you can possibly imagine. So this is all about nurture. It's all about, you know, habit and start as you mean to go on. Everything's about creating habits for yourself, Kim. And it takes 66 days to break a habit and 66 days to introduce a new habit. Oh, please, Philip, I need a book of all these metaphors. (laughs) Thank you ever so much and such a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you so much, Kim. Have a really good evening. What a wonderful person. That was Philip Sykes from the British School of Etiquette. I hope you have learned something, but we've got many more tips and advice from Philip coming up during the um, during the next part of the show. We're going to have lots of fun, but first it's time for your, your 7 o'clock news.